Okay, I have a question for the Randus, the objectivists, both capital O and little o objectivists. As we were discussing these quantum mechanics and watching David Harriman's video, and for those of you who don't know, this is why I was talking about Ayn Rand, because I got into this conversation on physics with the uh, capital O objectivists. I find it funny that they reject relativity, general relativity, and quantum mechanics when they're objectivists, and this is how we, you know, arrived at these theories. But those theories, you know, are complicated. We have a simpler theory to discuss. I mean, David Harriman, for example, for all his criticisms of uh, Einstein and uh, Bohr and quantum mechanics and relativity, had nothing but praise for Galileo saying that Galileo is the, the father of science as we understand it, in fact. He seemed to think that G Galileo put things on a very um, objectivist footing. And yet Galileo believed in a kind of relativity that I think still uh, you know, will defy explanation by objectivists. And that's simply velocity relativity you know everybody knows that when you're in a car going down the road 60 miles an hour and another car is going 60 miles in the other direction that that car seems to be moving 120 miles an hour and you and the people in your car all seem at rest relative to one another but of course we expected that we could measure our velocity relative to the earth well we found out the earth is in motion and we still thought that we could measure our velocity relative to something, maybe the center of the universe, maybe uh, the medium through which light travels, uh, which was called the, the ether. But it turns out, no. If you're in space going 60 miles an hour in one direction and somebody is going 60 miles in the other, you are at rest relative to you. They are at rest. It's not an illusion. It's not just perception. They're at rest relative to themselves. You are at rest relative to yourself. They're moving relative to you, and you are moving relative to them. And you cannot tell which one is relative. So I don't see how, how that obeys the rules of non-contradiction and, and so on that, uh, that objectivists are holding, is, uh, holding dear to their heart and saying that reality cannot you know, cannot disobey these principles and there must be something wrong if we th see relativity in nature, real relativity. Not just, you know, incidental relativity that can be explained away by getting the, uh, uh, you know, correct frame of reference. So how is objectivity going to deal with the fact that there is no particular center of the universe or possibly that everybody is at the center of the universe, uh, that every point in the universe is the geometric center, equidistance from the edge. You know, how's it going to deal with that? I don't see how it can. I, I see uh, no possible way to rectify that. From an objectivist standpoint, there ought to be an objective frame of reference so that I could tell you what your velocity actually objectively is. And I can't. You know, the objective velocity I have is every possible velocity, potentially, or every actual velocity I have relative to every other object in the universe. There is no single velocity. But objectivism, as the capital O objectivists see it, implies that there ought to be an absolute objective frame of reference from which you can judge the velocity of a particular object. So how does that work out? I don't get it.